Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Let's Play series, this time playing a game called Caves of Cud. And a lot of you have asked me to play this game and so... Little did you know I was already playing it way before uh, you guys asked me because I knew that this was a game I definitely wanted to play. It is in early access so... Uh, the game isn't fully finished but it's fleshed out enough that there's a, enough content to really kind of go over it and uh, see what see what's in store for us. So. Uh, just a little teeny bit about the game here. It was developed by Freehold Games, and it's a science fantasy roguelike set sometime, I'm assuming sometime, long after uh, an apocalyptic event. So it's kind of neat because you're in the future, the far future, but there's old remnants of like a forgotten futuristic past. And it's just got a really interesting lore to it, a really interesting feel. And the game is just awesome. I've only put five hours into it. At least that's what Steam tells me. And I trust Steam. <laughs> so I've only put five hours into it. So uh, forgive me if I do mess up here and there. I've maybe rolled like three characters. My last character is pretty successful. And uh, I actually just deleted him simply to do the recording. Uh, I probably could have kept him, but I wanted to go through and have a fresh start for this recording here. And so uh, I've only played with a true kin. I actually haven't used, used a mutated human. And yeah, a little bit about the screen before I actually get into that. So you got a mutated human, true kin, and, true kin, and then you can uh, replay your most recent character. Um, the mutated human has all sorts of cool mutations and abilities that you can choose from. Um, the, the mutations and everything are really neat. There's a lot of them. There's like a whole page. I think there's somewhere around 70 muta mutations right now with uh, more planned for the future. So that's pretty neat, but I've never played actually as a mutated human. Then there's the true kin. Uh, you have get high starting attributes, uh, 20 bonus skill points each level, uh, bonus resistance based on arcology of origin. Yeah, you get all sorts of uh, really uh, interesting things. And so the mutated human, though I really want the mutation kind of things, I really like the true kin just because I like the thought of like being, I guess, a, a true human with no mutations. And so, uh, since the true kin is what I've really been playing the last uh, couple of games, that's what I'm going to roll here because that's what I'm most familiar with, and I don't want to take any chances. So we've got all of our uh, attributes here that we can go through and choose to raise up. So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to dump a lot of points in the strength. We want to be strong because my goal, I think, is to wield a long sword. That's what's been working for me so far. I want to be rolling around with a long sword. So we're definitely going to go with strength, get agility up there. Let's get it up to 17. Let's kind of get these all baselined here, and then we'll kind of decide what's really important. I think that's about good, actually. It could actually go like this. I think toughness is definitely going to be important. Um, maybe not that important. Intelligence would be important as well. Intelligence will help you... Um, Examine artifacts and such. You'll come into lots of artifacts in the world that'll simply just be marked as artifact. And then if you examine them, you could find out they could be really powerful things or they could be useless. It's hard to say. Although nothing seems to be too useless in this game. I found a use for almost everything. Uh, agility seems pretty important to dump into. I'd like to get that up. Uh, willpower. Uh, frequency with which you may use your mental mutations, your hit points regeneration rate, and your ability to resist mental attacks. So kind of important in a way. Um, but it doesn't help me because I don't have any mental mutations and I'm not sure if you can get mutations if you start as a true kin throughout the game as I've yet to come past any so I'm not sure this this lower yeah so we want that to 18 we want to have as much hit points as we can maybe I'll take agility down to that ego is not as important it's basically just my ability to haggle with merchants and kind of lower prices on things we'll get into that as we go along but, hmm, I think this isn't bad. Let's just maybe take one off of that. That gives me 20, and it gives me two more points. We'll dump one into each of these, one into agility, and then put the last one in strength, like that. I think that'll make us pretty tough. I think it's pretty important in this game to be, uh, to be tough because a lot of things out there are trying to kill you. So, alright, we're going to continue on. Now let's press space to select our cast. There's a lot of different casts to select from here. And uh, I found that some of the better ones are in the ice sheathed 
archaeology and the cru the crustal mortars of a yawning moon. <clears throat> so, let's see here. So these these all guys all get heat resistance, a couple of different attribute boosts, and these guys get cold resistance. Heat resistance isn't too bad. Several times I've been lit on fire in the game, and it's really unfortunate when that happens. But the cold resist might come in handy as well. Um, a Praetorian gets long blade proficiency, a block, shield slam, steady hands with bows and rifles, uh, plus one willpower, plus two strength, plus one toughness, and plus 15 cold. That's not bad. It gives us an extra willpower boost, toughness boost, and a good strength boost. I definitely want to roll with a long blade. I know that for a fact. So who's the other long blade down here? Is there one? Maybe not. Doesn't look like it really. Yeah, let's go with the uh, Praetorian of the uh, the Ice Sheath Archaeology of Ibu Abul. Yeah, Abul, I'll say. Yeah, that's what we're going to go with. All right, so here we are. Character creation is complete. This is going to be our character. Uh, we're going to press space to begin the game. And what is your name? Your name, your name, your name. Or I can press enter to have one chosen for me. Just, just go with this. There we go. Enter to confirm. And it's going to build our world. And here we are in the world of the Caves of Cud. Um, I could try reading this. On the 7th of Aru Ux, you arrive at the Oasis Hamlet of Jopa along the far rim of Mogharayi, the Great Salt Desert. All around you, moisture farmers tend to groves of Viridian water vine. There are huts wrought from rock salt and brinstalk. On the horizon, cuds, jungles, strangle chrome steeples and russet archways to the earth. Further and beyond, the fabled spindle rises above the fray and pierces the cloud-ribbon sky. Really nice. I like. I just like the way it's all really put together. If you actually look there too, you can see how it says kind of like cuds, jungles, strangle chrome steeples and russet archways. So kind of talking about how there's buildings in the distance but they're they're old falling apart buildings you know cities that have fallen and stuff like that and then a fabled spindle which i'm guessing is maybe like a big monument or a big building that was built hundreds of years ago and everybody's kind of forgotten about that that period of time so we'll press space here here we are in the game now i'm not really going to go over the controls too much you can always press f1 and get lots of uh, helpful uh, advice right in there so the first thing I usually do when I jump into the game is I check my inventory. I like to see what I started with because you kind of start with something different every time. So we've got a chem cell, uh, some food cubes, a torch, some cell injectors, which are basically like uh, heal for healing and such, and uh, some water skins with water, some fresh water. Fresh water is very important in this game. So far, the only way you can really achieve uh, or to get fresh water, I, I figured out for the most part, is trading. So you have to trade to get fresh water, so it's pretty important that you have it. Uh, food is pretty important as well, but we can kind of get that on and on. And in our equipment, so we press E here to get into our equipment. On our body, we're wearing a willowy reinforced chain mail. We have a Praetorian's cloak, a steel shield, a desert rifle with three rounds in it, a steel longsword, some leather boots, and a stun gas grenade. Okay, that could come in handy. If we actually look at some of these, I think if I press L, I can look at it and it'll tell me a little bit about it. Uh, nothing too much for that there. <clears throat> now let's look at the armor real quickly. Something I do want to go over. This item weighs much less than normal. Reinforced plus one AV. AV being armor value. And if you look there, you've got the diamond and then the circle, the kind of the empty circle right there. So the diamond is like your armor value. You know, how much it can block or take da damage and such like that, absorb damage. And that circle there, that is your dodge value. So that is how quick you can move wearing this item and dodge an enemy's attack. So as you can see, this willowy reinforced chainmail gives us a minus one dodge value. So it's actually not good for our dodge, but it's really good for our armor value. So sometimes you've got to weigh things out. Chances are if something has a really high armor value, it's going to have a lower dodge value because it's going to be heavy. And the Praetorian's Cloak gives us a two dodge value. So that kind of helps us, uh, it kind of cancels out and gives us a plus one for this reinforced chainmail, which is nice. All right, so that's our inventory. Now the next important thing to do is usually go through and rob these good people in this village. And what I mean by that is if you go into these homes here and then you close the door, you can go into their chests. It'll say that is not owned by you. Are you sure you want to open it? 
and you say yes and you open it and steal everything. So far, I've yet to see anything come of this. I haven't seen anybody get mad or the village try to attack me yet. So long as I don't do it when they're looking. I don't even know if they'll attack me well as uh, they're looking if they see me watching, but... I don't know. Nobody's bothered me yet about stealing these, so I just go into here and steal everything I can. Usually try to sell it or keep it. So I'll take the Iron Mace and the... Uh, was it that leather boots there, was it? Or what was it? It was uh, leather boots. I can actually wear the leather boots, can I? Because I don't think I have anything on my feet right now. Oh, I do have leather boots. Okay. And they're the same value, right? Yeah, one and zero. There should be another chest over here. And this one, yes. And what we can do is we can sell a lot of these things uh, to the market that's in this area. Or maybe keep some of them, depending. Ooh, bandages, not bad. And we'll definitely take that and the water skin as well. All right. And so down here is the market. Nothing in here. Right in here. There's this guy here. So press C to chat with him. What, we can ask him what kind of creature he is. I'm, he's a dromad merchant. I'm not really going to ask him that. I'm just going to press tab to trade. And so the stuff on the left is what he has. And the stuff on the right is what we have. And so I'll explain a little bit about what's going on here uh, through trading. So I'm going to press O to I'm sorry, not O. I'm going to press the uh, plus sign to offer him some of these items. We'll give him these leather boots since I don't need them. They're worth $3.85. And one thing to, men uh, to note right now is that there's actually two types of currencies in the game. So there's your cash, which is how much things are worth, as you can see, the money signs and whatnot. So you have a certain amount of cash. Mine is in yellow at the bottom of my screen. And then you'll notice there's drams. 3.8 drams and that's how much fresh water you have and you'll actually trade uh, when you go to trade things you'll trade cash value but you'll also trade with fresh water at the same time and you'll see how that works in a second so I won't go too much over it but that's basically how you get water so it's pretty interesting these are worth uh, these are worth a lot actually so let's throw those down and all right, we got three water skins. We're going to try to get some of those filled up. I think that's all I'm going to sell. So let's offer it to him by pressing O. So he'll say the, the Dromad merchant will have to pony up 17 drams of fresh water to even up the trade. Okay. And we'll say, yes, that is okay. We would love 17 more drams of water. There we go. So we've got a little bit more water. Now we want to purchase from him. We definitely want to buy more lead slugs because that's the ammo we need for our weapon we have. So we'll buy all of his lead slugs since it's only 1.1 drams of water and it's 0.03 per slug. He's got some shotgun shells as well. I'll uh, just skip the armor for now. Small cobalt, weird artifact, a strange tube. I wonder if I can turn that in. There's a quest I might be able to turn that into, but I don't want to take any chances. Let's get the all the food we can get. Oop. There we go. Because food is very important. A glow sphere, that's actually really useful, but I don't think I'll need it quite yet. I may come back for that. Uh, I'm not going to get any bandages. Does he have any good weapons that we might like? Nope, doesn't look like it. He's got a musket, a wooden buckler, ooh, a cell injector. Wow, 114. And he's only going to give me 14 for mine. A basic toolkit, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. And then some cateens and some water skins. Well, I've already got two empty water skins, so I'll just keep them. Basic toolkit. Um, not sure I know what that is. A small metal box with an assortment of basic tinker tools increases the likelihood of recovering additional bits when you disassemble an artifact. Okay. Oop, I didn't even do the trade. I queued all that up and I never even actually did the trade. So let's grab all of that again and then we are grabbing the food and I think that was it. You know what? I'll grab the strange tube as well. Since I only need it for a quest, I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, we're going to offer. All right, so we've got to pony up two drams of fresh water to even the trade, including the price, the cash value of the items. But other than that, we're sitting pretty good. All right, so let's leave him now. We're going to go accept some quests that are in the town here. This is like a, uh, a story-driven slash quest-driven game. Use my numpad over here. Actually, I was using the directional keys. The numpad's a lot nicer. All right, we're going to come in here and accept our first quest. So we'll chat with this guy. Um, I'm not going to read through all these. If you want to read these, you can pause the screen. He's basically just ignoring me right now. We're going to stand here and stare at him. He's kind of ignoring me some more. And he says, must you disturb me? What are you, some sort of treasure hunter? So uh, 
At the very least, make yourself useful and bring me a knickknack from one of the caves. So where can I find the cave? And there are caves everywhere, you dolt. This is Cud. Try the Rust Wells just east of here. So, okay, I will return with a knickknack. Uh, I received a new quest. Uh, fetch our guy a knickknack. And I already have a knickknack that I can actually give him, so we can just chat with him again and see if I can give him that. Uh, and I can. Ooh, what did I just give him? No, I didn't. Okay, I thought I... Alright, we're going to give him the strange tubes. I've accidentally given him a self injector before, and I was really upset when I did it in the past. So I was, <laughs> I was mad that I might have done that again. All right, so we gave him the strange tube. We got 75 XP for that. We only paid 0 0.03 for that. So we completed the quest. Uh, he says, it appears you must be useful after all. Now go fetch me another trinket. So we'll accept it again. And this time, we don't have anything except for our self injectors and whatnot. I don't want to give those up. So we'll have to find another trinket to turn in. But um, we're sitting pretty good so far. We'll accept this other quest over here. And real quickly... If you look at the top right hand corner, I didn't really go over anything up there, and I'm not going to go over all of it, but you kind of can see where the XP is, 75 out of 220 right now, um, our HP and, and such, so I didn't really want to go over too much of that, but that kind of lets you know what's going on. So we're going to chat with this guy and accept the next quest. So um, I'm in search of work. So he says, uh, I wasn't going to read all these, but I'll kind of sk skim through them so you can get an idea of what's going on. So some critters are eating his water vine. Um, he saw one slinking around a vine patch. He noticed a bit of red dirt in the water vine pool. So he's basically saying that uh, the, he recognizes the soil from a nearby cave to the north they call Red Rock. And so he wants me to travel there and kill as many of those as I can. I will accept your quest. I've already done a lot of these quest lines and such. I made it fairly far. Um in the game well not fairly far but I, I made it a good distance but there we go so those are the only two quests that i know of that we can accept in this town now the most important thing to do actually is to go out and find food and level up so that's what's really important right now and this just tells me a little bit about the map i already know how the map works so we're going to go out and kind of explore around a little bit and try and find ourselves some things to kill and uh, some maybe gather some food for our journey ahead and the biggest thing we need to do is level up as you can see you move across the map the interface kind of jumps around which is kind of interesting I've never really seen anything like that before all right we're gonna kill these glowfish here um, because you can eat them actually and they're pretty good food so we'll just uh, kill him and then we press G to pick him up you can see in the bottom right hand corner where our log is we got a glowfish corpse kill this one as well this is glowfish seem to be very good food from what I could tell all right he missed me he actually that glowfish actually tried to do some damage Oop. where's that glowfish corpse there it is all right let's go up here next here's a bunch of other glowfish let's try to catch these guys here Oop. <clears throat> no I did not want to do that there we go that was us just being prompted to pick up water which I don't want to do Right now, I will do that in a second, though. All right, that glowfish corpse. And wasn't there another one over here? He must have dropped down here. <clears throat> Excuse me, am I... I got like an itch in my throat for some reason. All right, pick that one up. There we go. We got that one. Okay, and then we'll get this last one. That should be more than enough. All right, and then one thing I do want to do as, that I mentioned earlier is I want to pick up some of the salt water here. So I can't drink salt water. However... Salt water is really useful for things like if you catch on fire, you can pour it on you to put the fire out, which is kind of funny. So I'm going to fill this water skin here with uh, 2,000 drams of salty water. Uh, it's not useful for drinking. It's not useful for trading, but it is useful for putting yourself out if you burst into flames, which is more than, uh, more than important. All right, so... We're not going to level up off of killing glowfish. I need to go find something else to kill to help me level up. What's up here? Looks like a road, maybe. I could probably follow this road. I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that. However, uh, I'll think about that. And I'm going to end this episode off here. So, I hope you guys did enjoy it. I hope you're excited for some Caves of Cud. I'm very excited to see how far we can get. And I look forward to seeing you next